Hey, hey, hey. So today we're talking about part two of what you should do to get to sleep at night. So if you don't already know me, I'm Jackie Grant, healthy hormone lifestyle advocate and founder of We Grant Fitness and Health. And today I'm talking about two things that are going to help you to get better sleep. Now, the first one is stress. And the second one is exercise. So both these two things can impact on your sleep. So let's start off with thinking about uh, managing your stress. So we know that caffeine causes a stress response, as I told you in part one. So if you've not watched part one, go back to part one. There's also external stress from lives, our relationships, work environment, and so on. And stress has a major issue for our health and a cause of inflammation and a huge impact on our sleep. So with caffeine out of the way and your diet in a good shape, we now need to look at managing external stress levels. Tackling the source of stress is a good place to start, but also consider this. A pleasurable experience does more to heal the body than a stressful one causes the heart. Therefore, if there is stress in your life, give yourself a pleasurable experience. Go to the cinema, get a massage, go for a walk, do some yoga, read a book, paint, get some sun, whatever you enjoy to clear the mind and make you smile with gratitude. Speaking of gratitude, practicing gratitude focuses the mind on good things that are happening in your life. And if you can start your day with a positive thought, this will set you up for a positive day. I've been using the five minute journal for some three years now. For me, it's a super quick fix to bring my thoughts of gratitude to the surface along with focus of my day and a reminder of all I can achieve. Meditation is highly effective for releasing that stress as it's a lot to do with the mind and thoughts spinning uncontrollably in your head. Meditation enables to clear your mind gives you some headspace and restores that feeling of calm and you don't have to sit cross-legged with your palms turned up if you don't want to meditation tracks are readily available sit comfortably and plug in they can be as short as 10 minutes even shorter than that five minutes that's all that's needed i use insight timer it's really really good it's got so many different ones. It's actually got a really good one for sleep. Let me have a quick look. It's got a really good one for sleep. And this one is absolutely amazing. If you can't get to sleep, this is a really good one. This is called Sleep Like a Baby and it's on Insight Timer. It is 27 minutes, but you will sleep like a baby, guys. Okay, really, you're not meant to meditate and go to sleep. You're meant to do a meditation and at least sleep off. But I love that. And if you find it difficult to sleep, that is really good. So the five-minute journal is available on Amazon if anyone wants to try it. Alternatively, get yourself a journal or a notebook where every morning you can write three things you're grateful for and just start with that. Focus on positives, the things you have, the things you can visualize and feel in your core and they are going to move and stir you to feel good. Be ready to do this on waking and before you go to sleep. Next download I love is Omnivana app and it's a great resource but there are loads to choose from and this needn't be longer than 10 minutes so that you can easily listen in the morning and at night before you go to bed quite calm and create space. To, for a busy mind. Yes, just 10 minutes after writing your gratitude list will have a huge effect on relieving stress of the day and promoting quality sleep at night. The trick is not to fall asleep listening to it, like I said, but after, be consistent and you'll start to see the benefits. Let me know how you get on. So the second thing I wanted to talk to you about exercise. Exercise is important for both your health and your sleep. Exercise improves your cardiovascular health, mental health, metabolic function, to name just a few, as it has positive effects 
on your overall health and it can have a positive effect on your sleep. It is recommended to exercise 30 minutes, um, five to seven times a day, not times a day, a week, <laughs> minimum. But if you want to lose weight, it's really double that. So it's at least five days, one hour, um, 300 minutes a week. So we are born to move, guys. So the type of exercise is important too. You know, walk, run, cycle, swim, they're all effective cardiac activities and the list goes on. But what I want you to do and what I do with my clients is we just build a movement menu. What things do you love doing? What things do you want to do? What things that you've done in the past that you might want to take up again? Just think about, you know, your own movement menu. Yeah what you love doing because it's not all about going to the gym it's not all about exercising in groups it's all about whatever way you find to move that's best for you so if you are going to add some um, cardio into your week it's really great to add two or three times high intensity workouts um, with weights which will boost your burning hormones and improve bone density and strength and really important, especially for the perimenopausal phase of your life, to protect against osteoporosis. The best time to exercise for highest hormone activity is, which is for testosterone and hormone growth, um, human ho growth hormone, um, is around four o'clock in the afternoon. But any exercise at any time of the day is great. So it's better for fat burning in terms of four o'clock. What's the time now? No joking. Remember though, exercise is stress to the body. So keep it hard and short. Equally, and especially for the menopausal woman, leisurely exercise is also important. So leisurely walks, yoga, pilates are all beneficial to promote relaxation and reduce stress. Exercise produces natural um, endorphins and our happy hormones. So if after a workout you are buzzing, just make sure you don't leave it too close to bedtime or else it might disrupt you getting off to sleep. That being said, it is great tonic for inducing quality sleep. So a must to include in your day. If you work long hours, in a seated position, at desk or driving, wherever possible, get up and walk around the office, you know, or kitchen, or duck canteen, or just stop at service station if you're driving at regular intervals um, every 30 minutes. Stand up during your telephone calls and sit upright at your desk, keep your tummy muscles awake. I've been using a standing desk since I moved. And standing up, sitting down, can wind up and down, sit down, go to the side. What am I talking about? It's great. You can really make a difference. Um, so much more alert and productive, not to mention switched on. Walking to the train station or bus stop, waking you know, walk into the shops at lunchtime, taking the stairs instead of the lift, taking the escalators if you're going to work, you know, all these things add to your daily activities. So now, if you've not already, add exercise to your daily plan. It will really, really help, especially for your sleep. Now, guys, I am going to still be here with you for part three. So part three, I'm going to talk about electronics, magnesium. So why magnesium? And the final thing is your sleep environment. Okay, guys. So I look forward to seeing you because I really, really want you to make sure that you watch this series. If you haven't watched part one, go back to part one and watch that now. Make sure you go and watch part three once I've put it up and that will be amazing. So 
Jackie Grant, your healthy hormone lifestyle advocate, granting you better health and fitness.